Hello everyone, I'm Sergio and I'm going to talk about our work, how can I choose an explainer and application grounded evaluation of postdoc explanations. So in ML systems, there are several personas interacting with it. And when you take into consideration explanations, they have different objectives for the different personas. For example, a data scientist wants the explanation to help uh, debug the model and iterate the model. A human in the loop wants explanations to make better and faster decisions. And a decision subject wants to understand why a model made the decision and wants to improve their outcome. As of today, there is no standard way of evaluating and comparing different explainability methods. It is common to see introducing with the method of explanation a method for evaluation also. And this is because there is no clear um, a standard way of evaluating them. It is not clear also for a given setup uh, with a given persona and a given task, which, uh, which metrics should, should we choose? There was a taxonomy introduced by Daoshi Veles and Kim uh, that divides the types of experiments that exist with uh, explainable AI. Most of the evaluation that is done right now is through human grounded evaluation or functionally grounded evaluation. And these either use uh, proxy tasks on uh, now real humans or simple tasks on real humans. Uh, to summarize the problems as of today of uh, evaluation of explanation methods, uh, the experiments have either a proxy tasks or simulated users of our behaviors. Uh, the experiments use metrics that might not be related to the objective of the experiment and the user that is having the explanation showed to them. And uh, only one XI uh, method is evaluated at a time normally. The main reason for this is that there is a lack of a standardized way of evaluating these uh, XI methods. The goal of this work is to evaluate and compare the impact of different XI methods on our target persona, which is the human in the loop. We want to see the impact on the performance of the human in the loop of different XI methods. Uh, to do so, we uh, have to uh, perform application grounded evaluations. To accomplish this goal, we introduced a methodology, which is called XI test. And uh, this methodology is defined by four main building blocks. The first one being defining our hypotheses. So these hypotheses are defined a priori before we run the experiment. And uh, they convey the uh, information about the experiment that we want to test. For example, we want to know if the, a given explainer is better than other explainers, or if having explanation is better there than having no explanations at all. After defining our hypotheses, we have to define our setup. And this is answering questions such as who are the users, how many there will be, what data will we use and model, and what variants will be, we will be testing. We have to also define carefully our metrics, and these metrics must reflect the impact of showing explanations on the user. So, um, for example, we can use metrics from uh, the confusion matrix to evaluate the decisions of the user, such as accuracy, recall, FPR, and, and metrics like this. We can evaluate the speed or the user perception. Based on the distribution of each matrix, we have to define the statistical test for that metric and as a set of parameters for that statistical test. Uh, these parameters are the significance level, which are the uh, type one error rate, uh, the power, which is one minus the type two error rate, defect size, which is the minimum difference that we want to detect on our statistical test and the sample size of our experiment. The following step is running the uh, exit test uh, themselves, themselves, and uh, it, this, we divide these in three different stages. Uh, this is done to properly isolate the different effects of the components of the um, of the system. The first one being only the data. Uh, the second, we uh, have uh, the model score 
presented uh, as well as the data. And the third one, we have the explanations. On the first uh, step of the experiment, the human on the loop only has information relative to the instance he is reviewing uh, for making a decision. After that, he's going to have the model score for that instance, and that conveys the decision of the model and the uncertainty of the model for that instance. And then the uh, human in the loop will have a, the explanation for that instance, which will try to explain why the model score was, was as such. And it will hopefully point to some part of the data that is important for the decision. After that, we uh, have the hypothesis testing step, which is basically after gathering all the metrics for all the variants, we run the ad adequate statistical tests and we check the, the p-value against the significance level and draw our conclusions for each hypothesis. To put this methodology in practice, we made an experiment. Um, this experiment was in a real-world scenario of e-commerce fraud detection. We asked uh, for three fraud analysts to help us with their expertise on reviewing uh, instances. They usually have a software and a UI to review those instances. And we maintained that UI and added a widget on top of that for us to uh, show the explanations. Uh, we used historical data and a model that was used uh, in that period. And we used three postdoc explain explainer methods to generate the explanations for each instance. On the total of the experiment, we used uh, 1,300 transactions. The explainers that we used were Lime and Shap because they're, they're popular explainers for uh, on the literature and uh, on the community. And we used also three interpreter because our model was a tree-based model, which was a random forest. We can see here an example of the UI the, um, the analysts would have on the experiment. Uh, all of the features were parsed uh, to be human readable and the feature values also. Uh, you can see the example here of a, a date difference and a missing value. You can see also that all of the explanations have only six components, which is to balance the time the, the analyst has to review the, uh, the transaction and the information that they have. And then we also can see that uh, there's a color associated to each component, which means that uh, green means that the component was helping the transaction being positive and uh, red means that the component was helping the, the transaction being uh, fraudulent. For the variants of the experiment, uh, we have data only, data plus model score, and we have a variant for each explainant. And we divided the data on the following way. We divided 400 transactions for the first two experiments to have a notion on how the distributions were and uh, uh, to have also instances on that on, on that on those variants. For Lime Shap and Tree Interpreter, we calculated the sample size that would be ideal for our parameters on the statistical tests, and a value of 300 was what we got. The metrics that we chose reflected the impact uh, on the fraud analysts of the explanations, which means that we measured uh, their accuracy and their recall and false positive rates on the, the transactions that they reviewed. And also we measure their uh, speed on uh, reviewing the transactions. After each uh, transaction with an explanation, the users have a questionnaire to be answered. The first question was regarding the completeness of the explanation. Uh, we asked if the explanation covered all the relevant information for the decision. The second one was all about the usefulness in time. Uh, we asked if the explanation was helping make a faster decision. And the third one was about the uh, the decision itself, the, the useful for the decision. We asked if the explanation was helping making the decision or not. We measured the user agreement on a small subset of the instances. We uh, um, hypothesized that uh, by having more information, the users would have a higher agreement, which means making the same decisions for the same instances. 
and we save 12.5% of the data set to be reviewed by all the, the analysts. Uh, we used Flies Kappa as a measurement of this agreement, and the Flies Kappa of a negative, negative value of minus one means that the analysts have a total disagreement, of plus one means that the analysts have a total agreement. For the statistical tests that we used for the metrics, it depended on the number of groups that we were comparing and the type of variable that we had. We observed that none of our vari variables were really uh, normally distributed, so we used non parametric tests for the numerical variables. Uh, for uh, comparisons of uh, three or more groups, we used the Kruskal Wallace age test on numerical variables, and these are the decision time and the questionnaire results. And for binary variables, which are accuracy, FPR, and recall, we use the chi squared test. When we were comparing two variants only, we used another set of tests, uh, which were for paired tests. Um, for numerical variables, we used the Man Whitney U test on decision time and the Kalmogorov Smirnov test on the, the questionnaire results. For the binary variables, we used the chi squared test again, but only using two groups. All of those comparisons between groups uh, paired uh, were corrected if there were multiple comparisons uh, in that regard. The first hypothesis that we had was that uh, showing the ML model score would improve performance of the analyst when uh, compared to only when they had the data. This was not observed in accuracy. We actually observed a decrease in accuracy, which was significant between data only and data plus model score. And this uh, partially refutes our hypothesis. And we saw a significant decrease in time, which means that the speed of the analyst was higher when we had the model score. This partially uh, supports our hypothesis. On the other metrics, no other significant change was detected. And the other metrics being uh, false positive rate and recall. The second hypothesis that we had was that showing explanations would improve the performance of the analysts over the other two variants, which are data only and data plus model score. We did observe a decrease in time between data only and the explainer methods, but we did not observe other significant changes on other metrics. The third hypothesis that we had was that explanations have different impacts and performance on the users. And the only place where we saw that was in, again in decision time, where the, the explainer tree interpreter had a better decision time than the other explainers. Uh, we cannot really see this in the confidence intervals, but this is because of the format of the distribution. The fourth hypothesis was that for the questionnaire, each explainer was perceived differently. On the first question, we did not see that. We did not see a significant difference between the explainers. We did see, however, a tendency to answer on the neutral question and a balance between positive and negative answers. On the second question, we did see a significant difference, and this was provoked by Lyme. And Lyme basically have more negative answers on this question uh, when compared to the other explainers, uh, which means that the analysts thought that Lyme didn't help them review faster at all. And on the last question, we did see uh, a significant difference again, but this time it was provoked by tree interpreter, and we did see uh, a greater number of positive answers for tree interpreter. The last two hypotheses that we had were regarding the agreement. Uh, the agreement, we hypothesized again that uh, with increasing levels of information, we would have increasing levels of agreement also. So on the, what we observed in reality was that there was a decrease in agreement between data only and data plus the model SCAR. And when we added the explanations, the agreement would recover to uh, values near the original value of data only. We actually observed that Lyme provoked the best agreement between the analysts. We uh, also made a study on the explanations themselves. We, the model that we used used uh, 
111 features and only as a fraction of these features were used by the explainers to explain every instance on the sample. We saw that tree interpreter was the one that produced more, vari um, more variable explanations with 96% of the features being used in the explanations and Lime was the one that produced the least variable explanations with only 30% of the explanations being used. Uh, regarding the overlap of explanations, we uh, measured how much uh, an explanation for a given instance would be the same for different explainers. So uh, for Tree Interpreter and Chap, we saw that 53% of the explanation on average, uh, which means that uh, three features uh, on average would be the same for Tree Interpreter and Chap on a given explanation. And on Lime uh, and Tree Interpreter, we observed the lowest value being only 23.5%. We see here with these results that the explanations are highly dependent on the method that we use to generate them. For the limitations of our study, we have to talk about the sample size. Um, this was really um, limited by the number of participants that we had and their availability on the experiment. And this has an impact on the effect size of the experiment, uh, which means that our tests were less sensitive to smaller changes on distributions. We could also have external factors on our experiment, which might skew the results in one way or another. And these, of course, can be diluted when we have larger samples or a continuous evaluation of the, of the variance. Also, we have the decision ban. Uh, this is um, a constraint on our scenario. It's a real world scenario. And basically, the analysts only see transactions from a given band of scores. This, uh, this, this band is, uh, is near the decision threshold of our model. And because of that, it's where the model has a higher uncertainty associated to it. And this might impact the, uh, the performance of the users on the task uh, itself because it's a harder task and the quality of the explanation methods. So uh, for the conclusions of our, of our study, we propose XITest, which is an explainability evaluation methodology. And this methodology uh, is tailored for the human on the loop and for real tasks. And it's tailored for making uh, application grounded evaluations. This, this methodology is agnostic to the XI method being tested. This methodology uses uh, task-related metrics and, and focuses on the task to uh, extract the metrics and uses strong hypothesis testing to validate the results that we observe. On the results themselves, we see that there's a trade-off in our case of between accuracy and speed. Uh, and in our case, we observed that data only has the best result in accuracy, but the worst result in decision speed. And um, that the our um, our accuracy was the worst when we only when we add the data and the model score. We observe also that uh, the explainers uh, appear to have have a middle ground in accuracy, and tree interpreter also had the best result in the decision time. And this is it for the presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Any question that you have, feel free to ask me or any of the co-authors. Thank you.